The contents of these videos are for educational purposes only. We do not suggest or recommend that you participate in any illegal activities. We are not lawyers, just law-abiding citizens. Please always perform your due diligence before determining if you may or may not do something. If you can't measure it, you probably can't manage it. Things you measure tend to improve. Hey, how's it going, you guys? Thanks for joining me for another episode of Bitcoin and Coffee. I'll be your host, Eugene Forrest. So, what do we got going on? Well, we're doing one of those dark web episodes, and this one's the long-awaited episode where I go ahead and I show you how to use a Bitcoin mixer so that you can go ahead and break down that pesky KYC that is part of the regulation that's been infiltrating this cryptocurrency space, not part of the libertarian movement that we all had started off dreaming of with the cypherpunks in the beginning of this. And of course, we have our lovely co-host, Samantha, joining us. Hi, everyone. So what do you think, Samantha? You ready to go ahead and start busting out this episode finally? Yes. Now that it looks like we got the sound and audio Take working. Two. Let's go ahead and pop over to the screen share. Let's go ahead and stare at the wall. Ooh. <laughs> so... Uh, let me see if I can remember how we did the last one. Or Whoa. do you just want to do it a little differently this time, Samantha? Uh, we were talking about privacy. Yes. Right? And we were talking about how people don't even realize the level of intrusiveness that happens, right, behind the scenes. The tracking, right? Yes. Facebook has been all over the news for it, Right? Cryptocurrency, money, we see countries with regulation. There's nothing wrong with wanting to mix your cryptocurrency. We've seen, you know, from studies that 90% of people mixing their Bitcoin are mixing their Bitcoin and not using it in illegal activities. Not Before, sending after, it nothing. Not yeah. sending it to the dark markets. Yep. So I'm not here to tell you if it's illegal or not illegal. I'm not here to say that this mixer is going to be the save all for you when it comes to Bitcoin because, of course, there is the wallet. Uh, I do recommend that if you're trying to keep some anonymity as well with your wallet, you can go ahead and use Tails as an operating system, and that puts everything through the Tor browser. Uh, there's also an Electron or Electron wallet uh, that's part of the Tails. Mm. operating system but of course writing down your private keys and being very specific about these things because when you go to restart up the operating system the wallet will be fresh again right it will have no nothing right it'll have no nothing. memory of your previous you know existence transactions right it's like the groundhog day of wallets Okay, well, let's go ahead. Let's open up our Brave browser. Let's take a look at the wallet that is the channel's wallet, right? Because we're a not-for-profit organization. I mean, you guys will be able to see and have been able to see everything that happens around here uh, with all of our donated Bitcoin. As you can see, due to our gracious donators of Benchin and Paul Rouleau and Josh, Josh and Katie, Katie uh, we were able to collect uh, 0 .001 or I mean 0 .01 Bitcoin. Uh, of course, I told you guys that we did do this already yesterday without sound. So this is take two, and you can see here the transaction that we had sent. Um, the minimum for this Bitcoin mixer is 0 .0025, I think so, which yeah. is about $25. Um, and they charge a transaction fee of 0 .0002, which is two bucks. Actually, it's a little more than $2. Yeah, I mean, it was like, yes. And that's per wallet. Yes. So per. we're going to go ahead. We'll look at all of this in some more detail. But of course, you know, we do want to stop. We want to look at the Block Explorer because this is the main, this is how they're seeing. This is how Chainalysis is going ahead and breaking it down. They, Of course, they probably have much better tools and graphics interfaces to be able to follow this along. But you can see here from this is my wallet. This is where I sent it to. You know, you can click on it and you'll follow it through to the next site. 
which you can see here. Follow through again to the next one. And of course, you can follow the chain, right? All right. Well, now that we have this up and going, let's go ahead. Let's turn on our VPN. You were a sheep, now you're a bear. Rawr. Well, now our service provider won't be able to tell that we're going to go ahead and open up this Tor browser. Uh, some countries, it's illegal. Some people like to say that just the use of the Tor browser can get you on a watch you list. things of other... Yes, I mean... If they can tag you in a picture, I'm sure they can figure it out. All right. Well, of course, the Tor browser takes a moment here to load up. And here we go. And of course, let's always double check and make sure that our Tor browser is configured properly. Never open your Tor browser to the full window size. If you want to make adjustments, make hand adjustments, but don't make it to the full screen. It's one of the ways they can track you. And let's open up a new tab. Let's go ahead and paste our onion address in here for the Bitcoin Laundry Mixer. Okay, let's go ahead and check our onion route. And we can see Germany, France, Germany, nice, nice. Mm. All right. Samantha, you want to go ahead and read this? Uh, why would you want to mix your Bitcoin? Let's see what they tell us about it. Let's see what their, their words of wisdom are on why we will want to use their services. Why mix? Did you know that Bitcoin transactions are not anonymous and can be tracked? Hiding your identity in this digital world can be tricky, and you might be leaving behind several digital footprints without realizing. Bitcoin Laundry is here to help you keep your Bitcoin transactions anonymous and private. When you start a mix with us, we exchange the Bitcoins you send us with coins from our reserve pool that can't be traced to your identity or your previous transactions. To be extra safe, we also offer options to delay your payout to send it to multiple addresses. We keep our fees low and reserve pools large to make sure you can always give, or we can always give you the best possible service. Well, that's a lot that they're saying here. Uh, what I've seen so far is that it does seem like we send them our Bitcoin, and yes. they're gonna send they're gonna send us Bitcoin that they're holding on to in a reserve pool. But five transactions seems to be about the limit where it starts to become difficult and obscure for to really say who's the owner. I'm. It looks like that the reserve pools are sending it around as well from transaction to transaction with wallets that is creating, which is putting any questionable activities more than five transactions behind in the log right i mean it sounds good and i i mean I, we know it works because sadly you know did too <sighs> Uh, they have a clear net site. You can see it listed down here at the bottom. That is Bitcoin slash or dash laundry dot com. Uh, we are personally using the Tor, the onion routed address at the moment. Uh, this is for anonymity, privacy, right? To, that we came to this anonymity. site, that we that we generated this address. Uh, as you can see, that if you don't put a delay on it, that as soon as they have one confirmation, they'll go ahead and send out your transaction. We've seen this as well. Yes. That they were very fast about it. Uh, no logs. So this is great. They they give you a reference number that you can use to log back in for seven days to check on your transaction. And after seven days, they're going to erase it. And if for some reason you didn't want to wait the seven days, like you got your mixed Bitcoin, you can go back and erase the log right then and there. 
So that keeps, you know, from Big Brother coming and asking, hey, who's used your services? Give us your computer. We're seizing all of them. No records. No records. You can choose up to five addresses. So if you have larger sums of Bitcoin, Mix you can have multiple. Yeah. Right. You'll use one, you can use one wallet and create multiple addresses. And then even though you're sending the funds to the same wallet, you'll be channeling, channeling them through multiple addresses. And then with time delays, it makes it look more Normal. obscure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get what you're going with. Now, they're also only charging point zero 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 two. What you said was like two something. Yes. Yeah, it, well, of course, much. it's based on the price of Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin's about 10200 so this would be like $2.20 or so. Yeah, that's not that bad. And, of course, they're secure. Prevented against any type of attack. <laughs> yep. All well, right. like it says, so you can use our service with confidence. I mean, that's what they're going for. Well, let's go ahead. Let's give it a shot. Let's clean your Bitcoin. All right, this is where we get into the fun stuff. Let's pull out the ledger for the channel. And let's see. We need a new address. Let's go to the accounts. This is the one that we had picked up and sent it to last time. So let's just yes. go ahead and get another receiving address for them here. Let's continue. All right. Let's go ahead and use the trusty ledger. Putting in the PIN code. And there we go. And let's open up the Bitcoin wallet. And then here we go to continue. We're going to use the device to verify the address to make sure that no hacker has gotten in here and put their address in exchange of the address. <laughs> All right. I usually just check the first three and the last three. I got SJD. And let's have it roll back to the beginning here. 3GH. There we go. Yep. So this is a segregated witness address, as you can identify there by the three. Which, still not going to let this one go, that we did upgrade the network with segregated witness now reaching 50.5% of the network transactions. So, I don't care what people say. <laughs> we are upgrading. We are upgrading. All right, well, let me set that down. Let me go ahead let me highlight this address. Let me copy it. Let's go back to the Tor browser. Let's paste in this address. Let's double check it and make sure they didn't hack our clipboard. 3GH, SJD, that is the same letters I had said. Yes, it is. All right. You want to put a delay on this? Uh... One hour delay. You want to do another address? Like multiples? Multiple addresses. Mm. Pay some fees. I don't know. It's up to you. All right. Well, one address, two addresses. It's all the same. Let's put the delay in there, though. Uh, let's clean Bitcoin now. So it's going to generate a QR code for us, an address, and a session ID number. You see this? And it tells you the details, the service fee, the transaction fee. And it gives you a spot here to let you know when the input has come in. It says your input transaction will be shown here. Right. Your output payment will be generated after one confirmation. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's copy this address. Well, actually, first, let me slow down a little bit. Let's copy this ID session because this is very important. Let's put it in a text document. If anything ever goes wrong, right? You, you want to have number. that. So let's go ahead and let's save that because here is the onion routed address for the launderer. And here is the first one. <laughs> 
And so let's go ahead and minimize that now. All right, now that we have our safety backup receipt, let's copy this address. Oh, wrong one. What's it? I was gonna say, I was pretty sure that was our SJD. All right, let's make sure we copy the right address. <laughs> We See, this is can't. where people can become confused, though. What do you mean we can't send it to ourselves? All right. And let's go to the right account here. Let's go to send. Let's go to address. Let's paste this in. Let's double check it. 37C VZB. 37C. Z, yep. yep. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I always end up mumbling it. <laughs> and all right, let's send the max amount. I'm going to go ahead and... Mm. I'm stingy. Let's at least take a couple off. Just a couple. What's slow? Um, well, you do have up to three days. That it'll keep the thing. And we have seen that you can send transactions for one and two Satoshis a byte as long as you're not in a rush. The blockchain will pick it up. The transactions will process. I've done it. We've seen Tone Vase do it. It is. Yeah. But this is for the show. Let's go ahead. Let's try not to mess around too much. Uh, you know, right? We're already delaying it an hour. So let's go ahead. Let's continue. So also, let's not make the transaction stand out. Hmm. Other good point. Like, why would they want to have such a big fee on this random transaction? Or such a little fee? All right, let's confirm the transaction. Point zero zero six nine one four two c 7 c And let's see what's at the end here. VZB. That is correct. V, 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 yep, those are the mumbles. Those are the mumbles. Dun, and we dun, are broadcasting dun. the transaction. And our account balance will be updated. And we have sent. All right, let's go ahead and view this in a block explorer. There we go. I said I thought they were going to open it up in a block explorer. No, this isn't it. Nope. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> All right, well, let's look at it here in the tour then. Let's go ahead and refresh our session. And you can see that it's already noticing the input, but that it has zero confirmations. So that's great, right? We can see that the contract is working. We can see that they're receiving yeah. it. So one confirmation should take about 10 minutes. We did put a one hour delay on it. So I guess this is gonna go ahead and end our first round here, right, Samantha? Yes. We have all of this saved, so we can go ahead, we can close this. We'll close all those tabs. We saved our ID number. We can go ahead and close down the VPN. We don't need to look at the Block Explorer. And we can go ahead and see from our accounts here that account two is now empty, which is where all of our funds were. And then we have account one, which is the one that's gonna be receiving the account or the funds. And now let's take a look at, here's the funds that we received yesterday. Yes. So we can go ahead and view these in a block explorer. Okay. These are not our addresses. Hmm. Let's go back. Two, 
This is our address that here. That for sure is, yes. Yeah, so this is the address for the account. Sorry, I just happen to know what it is. I know it's the 31Z. So then when you come here and you see the transaction, you would, you know what I mean? The, our 31Z address is not the address that sent this Bitcoin. Even though we sent, at, we sent funds from 31Z to Wallet1. Yes. And as we look at the funds here in Wallet1, we see that the address that it came from is here. And this is not 31Z. It Neither one of not. these. And we can nope. trace this back. And this is where I was saying that it looks like that they're mixing by sending transactions to themselves over and over again. Right. Okay. Um... So I don't know if we actually need to do a part two then. Oh, because we did can. just take a look at the transactions through a block oh, explorer. Oh, you're right. Just not that one. Just not the transaction that we sent. But it'll look very similar. Yes. Because it'll come out of the 31Z. and, and Won't have 31Z yes. associated. It'll look the same as that where it is batches of address where one goes to two addresses and then that goes to two more addresses then down to two more addresses you can see a bitcoin is broken down so what they do is they probably have one wallet that they put all the bitcoin in and then they break it down break it down break it down until they can fill these orders right to put the five hops in it before they're sending you bitcoin i mean the only thing that we have different this time is that we did choose a delay mm -hmm. but i mean i'm pretty sure it should work out fine. All right. Well, we can go ahead and close this down. Well, we really appreciate you guys coming over here and checking out this video. Please, if you liked it, if you think that this is some valuable information, if you think this is something that's important, is putting privacy back in money, hit the thumbs up on this video. It helps out the AI algorithm for YouTube in order to understand that there's some good content here and that they should put us in the side column of other people with similar terms and topics because we are a little bit of a fringe channel here on YouTube because we talked about about cryptocurrency and yes. that is only 1.5 percent of the entire population we've started adding these dark web and dark net episodes uh because they are going hand in hand with bitcoin yes. the cryptocurrency market is about freeing people of the shackles that are put on you by your government because money is what makes the world go round money is what everything is based on so when they control the money they control everything Decentralized currency is the future because good money will replace bad money. Yes. So did you have a good episode here, Samantha? I like the mixer. It, it, what it, I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. So I like that. All right, you guys. I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to keep each other safe and keep your BTC safe. Later. Bye, guys.